Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. Okay, like I promised on Monday, um, McCall's uh, came out with their summer collection. Um, I think this is the last one that we were waiting on for summer, so let's get right to it. Kind of sad that this is going to be it for a couple of months, but we've had a lot of really good, cute, successful collections for this summer. I feel like really made up for spring, am I right? Okay, so the first one we have is this really cute dress. Um, it looks like we have like an empire waist and then maybe a few different, maybe that's a side seam. So maybe like princess seams along this maxi skirt. Um, and then like, obviously they're doing a play on stripes here, which is so fun. This is like a very chic boho kind of vibe I'm getting. Um, so yeah, so here are the, 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 the empire waist and then the princess seams, deep V. So you've got a sleeveless version here. This one has a little tie, which is cute if you need some waist definition. Here's the maxi version with a slit. That's cute. She looks like Selena Gomez here. Um, and I don't think this one has the slit. We would see it here. But, oh, I almost thought that was piping, but I think it's just the way the fabric is folding. Right? It kind of looks like piping a little bit, but I don't think it is. Um, oh, that's really stunning. Way to hold out on that till the very end. Um, cute. Then they're not even going to show that on the pattern envelope. That's amazing. Um, super cute. Pullover dress has two lengths, self-faced bodice and side seam pockets. I wonder if those side seam pockets are attached in any way attached here maybe I don't know um, tie ends for B&D side back and lower side front cut on bias yeah above mid knee length for A and B and then floor length for C and D cute so no provision for above waist adjustment which means like I guess you can't do a full bust adjustment or a small bust adjustment? Is that what that means? Um, here's our line drawings. Yeah, I would really want to make sure that these pockets, I don't know, came over to this seam somehow. I would, I don't know, I would rig them up to, so that they were tacked into this somehow. But here's the version with the contrast bias, which is really cute. I love whenever you can um, do a play on stripes and the pattern makes it very easy to do that. Like they're going to have the grain lines situated in a way um, that will make it really obvious how to accomplish that. So that's fun. Very cute. Um, I wonder too about this uh, self-faced bodice. So a facing, you know, is, I guess it's different than a lining because it isn't sewn in to a bottom seam, is that accurate? So if that's the case, then the facing just flops open and isn't sewn down anywhere. So I just wonder what it looks like, what the shape is, how big it is, things like that. Obviously it's easy enough to line the, these bodice pieces. That That is not difficult to do. But I'm curious to know why they opted for the self-facing instead. All right, so fabrics are your lightweight um, wovens and then also stable knits. Stable knits, I feel like would be better for these shorter ones, but um, all of your traditional lightweight stuff. If you have any fabric left over from the beginner sew along series, that's what you would use for something like this. Super cute. Um, no notions, which is awesome, which also makes this a really great beginner pattern. You don't have to sew in a zipper or buttons or anything. It just slips right on. Very cute. Um, let's see what else. So it takes, you know, the maxi versions are going to take up to three, well, a little more than two and a half yards, 
The shorter versions don't even take two yards, so that's very um, economical. And then we have no finished garment measurements whatsoever, not even the length or the width or anything. So I guess they just figured, let's just give them nothing, which quite honestly, I have said in the past, I'd rather have nothing than have a length and a width, you know, of the hem. So that's what they gave me. Cute. Good start. Good start, my calls. All right. Here's another. Oh, this is a learn to sew for fun. Okay. So this is the similar uh, pattern instructions anyways to what we're doing for the sew along um, and kind of a similar style too. Am I right? I mean, it's definitely a trapeze kind of look with a high neckline kind of haltery looking thing. This fabric looks so familiar. Where do I know this fabric from? Really cute. Okay, so we've got some contrast something going on here. And I don't know if this is cut like a wave or if that's meant to illustrate a ruffle or what. You've got the actual belt loops. Oh, here's the ruffly version. That's cute. Kind of reminds me of the Maya Sotis dress, but with, you know, a halter or neckline. I want to see the back. Oh, and a little slit. Okay, so the back has a keyhole with a little button closure. So, and also this, um, unlike what we're doing now, for those of you that are doing this sew along, um, this is not a casing. This is like, these ruffles are sewn into this little neck band. So you actually would learn a few different techniques than what we've done um, in this sew along, but uh, nothing, but still have the same silhouette. So I guess it's a kind of a give and take. All right. Learn to sew binding, learn to sew a slit, learn to sew gathers. Yep. I mean, I don't necessarily think that the style is something that I absolutely have to have, but I do think that there are some really cute versions in here for sure. Here are our line drawings. So yeah, that's just a gathered I thought for a minute maybe it was like, I don't know, some kind of ruffle or something, but it's not. And quite honestly, even though this is the only one with the belt, I would probably make a belt for all of these. I mean, even this ruffly version. Oh yeah, that ruffly version has a belt. Um, so why doesn't this one or this one, you know, I'd just make the belt for all of them just because I love a cinched waist from time to time. Our yardage, okay, so fabrics are gonna be gingham, cotton blends, gauze, and chambray. So they have chosen fabrics that are easier to sew with uh, than chalet and crepe and all of that, simply because they're not so shifty. But I really feel like this is some kind of lightweight woven. And maybe it's polyester, but um, I don't think that it's a cotton blend. It's definitely not chambray. And I don't think it's gauze. So just know that even though they're suggesting this, all of those lightweight fabrics that were recommended, um, you know, well, that were recommended for the sew along that we're doing now, but also that are recommended for any lightweight drapey dress. These ones here can be a little more structured just because if they, you know, trapeze out if they because the more structured the fabric is the more this is going to stick out and be more like a tent the lightweight fabrics are going to fall closer into the body and not be so you know tent like so that's why i don't necessarily recommend you know even a mid-weight woven for a maxi because it's just like where's your body <laughs> you know you just lose all side of your body in there but these shorter ones could be cute in these like chambray and cotton blends and gingham and stuff like that. All right, you need one hook and eye for the back neck closure. And then here's our yardage. So you need more for this maxi because the bottom is a gathered, big giant rectangle gathered. Um, so that takes more fabric. All right. 
and then our sizing is extra small, small, medium, and then large and extra large. Okay. I love that they came out with another one though. So for those of you that are doing the sew along and you want to try something else, you know, like I said, you have a similar silhouette, but you would learn some new stuff. So maybe give that a go. Ooh, you guys know I love this one. Okay, well, I mean, this is a, basically a home run for me. Oh man, okay. Um, so hard to tell from here, but we have a button front. We have princess seams. We have patch pockets. We have a partially gathered skirt. We have, you know, smaller straps. Cute. Then this version, which is basically totally different, is this bodice ties in the front. Now I do want to say that you cannot wear a bra with this, even a strapless bra. You could insert cups, but they're not super supportive. So putting that out there for anyone who's uncomfortable with that. Also last year, maybe Butterick, maybe New Look did a tie front. Remember the red uh, jumpsuit that I made? that had the tie front, the tie front actually showed quite a bit of like under boob <laughs> and wasn't super structured. So, you know, it's definitely, I mean, nothing's gonna fall out or anything, but it's definitely not the most modest. So maybe keep that in mind. Um, I like it better when the bodice, it has a, is like, how am I trying to say? When the bodice is sewn, in a way, and then you add a bow on the outside or something like that. You know what I mean? To where you know it's going to stay in place. This, who knows what's going to happen with this tie. But it is adorable, and I love the button front. All that to say. <laughs> Here it is with a embroidered border hem. I love that they've been including these types of fabrics so much. Okay, here's the same version that the first girl was wearing but with little ties on the sleeves or on the straps so cute adorable it fits her really well these kinds of bodices sometimes you have to worry about this underarm here it does look a little big on her but for the most part it fits really well I mean the bodice the princess seams are hitting in the exact right spot so good job on that Interesting. You know, I don't love patch pockets, but those are cute. Why does she have sunglasses on inside though? I mean, come on. Um, and then there's the back. Pretty straightforward. Cute. I feel like these two versions are totally different, which I love in a pattern because you really get a lot of mileage. A lot of bang for the buck there. So two links, close fitting through bust, has self-faced bodice. All of them, A, B, C, and D. I wonder if self-faced bodice, self-faced bodice means lined. Like how are these not lined? Um, slightly flared gathered skirt, shoulder strap and pocket variation. A and B have bodice ties in the front. A, B, D have side seam pockets. And B is mid, A and B are mid length. C and D are lower calf length. And then B, border print. Okay, so see what I mean? So many different versions. Yeah, I would, um, I would definitely be muslining this bodice just to see you know, just to see how much coverage is there. Cute though. Super cute. Okay. Oh, yardage. So yeah, all of your like mid-weight cottons, cotton blends, gingham, poplin, linen, border prints. Yeah, totally. All of that. I wouldn't go too lightweight on this just because this is more of a structured as you can see um, the fit that I'm talking about under the arm right there they could have pinched out maybe an inch actually so but again you know they're sewing to samples so all right um, you just need three quarter inch buttons that's it 
So that's also how you get into it. You unbutton yourself into it. This one actually is really kind of off. That's weird. Maybe it's just not, actually it's not buttoned all the way. <laughs> okay. Um, here's your fabric requirements. Yeah, you need kind of a lot for that gathered skirt, I guess. But you don't have to do, if the, you know, they said the bodice was self-faced. You could do that in something other than the self fabric. You could do it in a lining fabric or a fun contrast fabric. It's never going to be seen from the outside. So that would eliminate maybe a half yard. All right, and then here's your interfacing. And that's it. Cute. All right, here is another really fun dress with cutouts. This one has side cutouts. This one, this girl looks like Bella Thorne. Isn't that the same girl I said looked like Selena Gomez? <laughs> oh gosh, okay. Um, okay, so we've got a, a V-neck. Uh, looks like waist darts only? I don't even know, maybe a side dart. You've got a little waistband, a gathered skirt, and a little itty bitty gathered ruffle on the hem. Now, this is the kind of version of the whole prairie thing that I could get behind. It's just enough prairie, but still really sweet and, you know, kind of classic. All right, here's the cutout version. Yeah, you only have waist darts. Um, I have a dress like this. Lord, help me remember what it's called. Maybe it's by an indie designer for sure. I can't remember, but I made it a long time ago and it's not the best sewing job. So maybe fun to revisit one like that. That one also has a very high neck, which I don't love. So this is nice. A little deep V, side cutouts. There's the waistband again and the gathered skirt. Ooh, this is really pretty. You know, I love a flounce. And then here's like a maxi version. And look at the back. Let's get a better look at the back. So stinking cute. Oh, I need this. <laughs> That's cool how they um, photographed this. So you could see the front and back. That's what they needed. That's what they needed to do for the first one. But look, you have so many different dresses here. You've got this one here. Then you have that one with the ruffle, and then you also have the one with the side cutouts. I think that they all have this strap detail in the back, I think. Let's get to some line drawings. No, they don't. Okay, so A and B are more modest, where you have, you know, a full back piece and crisscross straps. So you could obviously modify, couldn't you modify all of these to have this? I don't see why not. Certainly this one you can. So you don't have to have the side cutouts here. Yeah, I don't see why not. Does this mean, oh, this is just a strap across the back. This part is bare skinned. But I mean, you could totally, if you wanted to make uh, this version with this back, you could just extend these pieces down and sew them into the waistband. I mean, a bit of an advanced move there, but you know, nothing that, I mean, we're all very smart people. You can figure it out. Um, so I feel like you could make this more modest if you wanted, but I do, I have to say, I do love this version. I love this version a lot because, you know, it's still got a little bit of coverage over the, you know, the meaty parts of your shoulder and your arm. Um, that one's really fun. That's really cute. Really, really cute. Too bad they can not make up another sample with C since it is so different, but fun. Um, dress has lined close fitting bodice. So you could insert your cups in there in between the uh, self fabric and the lining back straps and gathered skirt with hook and eye closures and center back invisible zipper. C has a flounce detail. 
which is this, and D has a lower ruffle. So, oh, separate pattern pieces for your cup sizes. So that's really nice. You full busted girls can get a really, really good fit or super small busted girls get a really, really good fit. You could maybe sew in a shelf bra or, you know, depending on how much lift you need, if you don't need a lot, you could uh, just sew in cups. So there are some options for you there. Cute. All right, now we've got this version. I've been seeing these like necklines with a super like open square neckline. I've been seeing that a lot lately in ready to wear and on TV and stuff like that. So this is just like a trapeze dress, button front, it has this little elastic detail, which doesn't serve really any purpose. It's just kind of cute looking. And then this super wide opening. It also has this little uh, flounce on the sleeve. This one is the same, but it has a gathered hem on the sleeve. We're getting a little nightgowny here, you know, with the, I think this makes it look like a nightgown when you have that. Not that this can't be a nightgown. Make it out of a really nice silk. Sleep, sleep the day away in it. <laughs> um, here's a strapless version with a ruffle hem. Yeah, so they made this out of, you know, maybe some kind of cotton. It's borderline canvas to me. I mean, it is a structured cotton, which is why it's giving you this great, like, flared out shape. You know, there is no um, drape in it whatsoever. So that's nice. They did a good job picking this fabric, I think. Oh, side seam pockets. Yeah. It is a little slim. Like this, this girl probably has a bit of a booty, which is why it's showing these drag lines. Uh, she's like, you know, leaning on this hip. And so everything's dragging this way, which makes me feel like, you know, it's a little bit tight around the bum in the back, but I think that's an easy enough thing to fix. I don't see a center back seam though. So you'd have to do it in the side seams. So. or create a center back seam, you know? The ruffle uh, elastic that's through here is also causing like a lot to happen here, but I kind of just feel like that's part of the design, the way that the elastic is going to release into the sleeve. But I mean, maybe it's a little tight. I don't know, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, there might not be enough ease in this cap because they figure to be so far on the very, very outside of your shoulder, but it could have a little bit more to it. That would prevent these drag lines, I think. I don't know. Those of you that, you know, know fit really well, help me analyze what's happening here. Yeah. This elastic is just, you know, kind of causing a lot of issues in the sleeve, actually. But when she stands straight, it looks good. It's only when she's, like, moving her arm. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, there is our pattern cover. Very loose-fitting dress in two lengths, has front band with button closing, side seam pockets, and elasticized upper edge. Sleeve variations and shoulder straps. Here's our line drawings. Yeah, just very nightgowny down here. <laughs> very, very nightgowny. And the fabric should reflect a wide variety. So linen, lawn, polished cotton, dobby. Okay, fair enough for these, but I feel like for, uh, you know, C and D, you could go really lightweight, like I said, silks, chalets, things like that, especially if you were going to be wearing it as a nightgown. Um, you could do cotton eyelet, you could do um, gauze, you could do a lot of different fabrics, but the more structured it is, the more it will fit like this, where it flares out, 
and the lighter weight it is, the more it will fall into the body, be more drapey, be more like a nightgown, to be perfectly honest with you. But the longer it is, in my opinion, the drapier it needs to be. That's just, that's just one little silly rule that I follow. So you need your buttons and your elastic. And then you need single fold bias tape for D. I don't know what that's for. I don't, I don't know what that could be for, but. And then your sizes are extra small through medium and then large and extra large. Here's your fabric requirements. Pretty modest, you know, not a ton. Not a ton, considering you're getting a lot of dress. But again, I feel like this is pretty narrow for those of us that are pear shaped. So you might want to buy a little bit more fabric just so that you can give yourself some more room in the back for our Badunka dunks. Does anyone say that anymore? I don't even know where that came from in my mind. Okay, so here's another fun version. This is kind of what I meant about the other one that had the tie in the front is that you can control this a lot better. You know what you're going to get when you sew this up. Um, and there's like no room for anything coming undone or loosening or anything like that. So, you know, a, a more modest person that still wants to have a little bit of peekaboo fun uh, could do this. And I'm obsessed with this uh, little twisty thing that has just really taken the world by storm lately. The last maybe year, year and a half, I feel like this is everywhere. Um, this is also a created pattern. I love created patterns. I almost love them more than the wardrobe patterns because you can take one garment and make umpteen versions of it. And I'll show you um, when we get to the line drawings how that works. But this version has the twisty tie front with a little peekaboo cut out here. It has a wide waistband, another thing that I absolutely love. And then kind of like a slim A-line, maybe flared skirt and straps. This one has an elasticized, you know, ruched front. Um, actually a really beautiful shape here across the bust and then like a halter, same uh, waistband. This one has a circle skirt. So with more flary, more drapey skirt. This is a slit. I want to, I almost thought it was a jumpsuit for a second, but it's a slit. It's the same as this yellow version, just longer with a front slit. Here is the first version bodice with the second version skirt. And then there she is again. There's the back. All right, and this is how it's a created pattern. Basically what they have done is they have assigned each piece a number. So you've got piece number one, which is the bot, which is this elasticized ruched bodice with the waistband. And then you've got piece number four, which is the circle skirt. Then you've got piece number two, which is this bodice with the twisty front and the cutout. And piece three, which is the slimmer skirt. Then you've also got piece number five, which is the longer skirt. So imagine like numbered roulette, you take piece one with piece five and you've got a maxi length version of this. You take piece three with piece one and now you've got a slim skirt with this. You take piece two and four and you've got this version with the flared skirt. So you just take all these pieces and you mix and match them and you, I don't know what like the number is. I guess it would be like whatever five factorial is. Is that right? Is, am I just like somewhere deep into my subconscious of, of education right now? But like my algebra is coming out. Isn't that right? Five times four times three times two times one would be the number of options that you have. I, I honestly, guys, I'm like blowing my own mind right now. <laughs> I don't even know where this is coming from. Okay. I've been obsessed, um, taken over by someone who is far more educated than I am. Um, <laughs> But that's why I love Create It because you can make so many versions and it's very simple to do. All of these pattern pieces are meant to work separately, independently, and also with each of the others. So all your notches will always line up. The instructions will tell you how to do it. It just makes it very simple. Obviously, this is something that you can do with other patterns, but this one just makes it a 
no brainer. You don't have to think about it. It's all explained, so on and so forth. Okay, with all that said, they have designed this to be a special occasion dress, but truthfully, you guys, you can make this out of a sateen or any kind of like non-special fabric, and it would just be a really, really cute dress too. Okay, dresses with shoulder straps or drawstring halter have close fitting lined bodices. Lined again, which is great. Um, skirts are scalloped edge, circular or ankle length. So they've actually intended for you to make this one with lace. So you can keep that scalloped edge or uh, like an embroidered cotton or border print or anything like that. Create your own design with mix and match pattern pieces. Tips to embellish your finished dress are included. I wonder what that looks like. Okay, so here's all of our line drawings. I mean, this version is going to be really tough for me because I just don't love strapless. And that's basically what this is. I mean, yes, it's technically being held up by this, but only at the center. There is nothing in the side holding you up at all. Um, you could probably redraft this piece to, to have more of a shoulder. I just, I don't know how easy or difficult that would be. I mean, obviously you could put these straps on this, but then what's holding the center up or does that even matter? I don't think it would. I don't know. It would definitely be something to think about. I mean, this version is obviously super cute and I think a lot of people could wear it. I don't think a lot of people could wear this. So keep that in mind, but really cute design. All right, here's the yardage. So again, yeah, they're going to recommend fancier fabrics, but again, you could do a lot of different fabrics. Um, the underlining I think is for your lace and your shears and your eyelets. Um, and then you also have a lining. So there's a lot going on with this dress. Um, so we have an invisible zipper and hook and eye. And then for bodice one is cording, which makes me feel like this isn't self fabric. This is just like rope or ribbon or something like that. Yeah. So, and then your fabric requirements are all separated out. So you kind of have to do a little bit of math with that, depending on which pieces you want. So, but it's a more accurate way of doing that. So worth the time. Cute. All right, what's next? Okay, now we've got this version kind of giving me a bit of a retro vibe, but you've got a itty bitty sweetheart and then I don't know what is what kind of strap is this it's like a halter but it reminds me of like a gun holster <laughs> you've got uh looks like bodice seams a bodice starts here but maybe your side dart is built into this and then a waistband and skirt uh pleats yeah and then a contrast band again playing up the stripes really well with this and i really love that they chose a stripe that is uniform where all the stripes are the same width. I like that a lot. Here is a planer version. That looks like some kind of twill to me. And I love these pockets, obsessed. Here's another version, which is the same as this one, but no bottom band and maybe no pockets. Here's a cute, like uh, if you use jacquard, jacquard, both sides of the fabric you can use and they're like opposites of each other. So that's how you would get that look. Or you could buy two separate cottons that are the same print, but different colors. This is so cute. I love this. Golly, I'm in trouble. I already liked like five of the Butterick ones or the new look ones. I don't remember how many I liked of the Butterick ones, maybe another five. And so far, like I like almost all of these. <laughs> They're just very different, you know, than anything I have. I don't have anything with like this detail. And the skirt is really nice. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I know that you're thinking, oh, obviously she loves that, but she doesn't because I don't want to sit on buttons. 
So I would probably convert all of this to a zipper and a center back seam. If I really needed to have the buttons, I, maybe I'd move them to the front, but probably not. So this just feels like, I don't know, I just feel like sitting on a button would just be so uncomfortable. But the back is cute. This is cute. And this could obviously be redrafted to where this comes up higher and the straps are shorter. Like, don't be freaked out that you have to make it like this. Yeah, are all the backs that way? Yeah. Yeah, it not, wouldn't be super difficult um, to figure out how to do this more modest, but it is really cute how it is. And it is summer, you know, like it's going to be 97 degrees here on Sunday. So, all right, fabrics are linen, cotton blends, crepes, and denim. Yes, I agree with all of that. I think the more structured on this, the better. I think lightweight and drapey might work for C&D, but not super drapey. I wouldn't go shally. Um, I wouldn't really go rayon. I would try and stick with cottons. And then you need your buttons for the back if that's what you decide to do. And then here's your fabric requirements. Look, you hardly need any fabric at all because it's so chopped up. It's so chopped up that, you know, you don't need big, huge chunks of fabric. You can kind of fit them in like pattern, test, pattern Tetris. Um, but you do have a separate field here for the bottom band of D, which I think is what she's wearing. Oh, no. This is D. What contrast D bands? What does that mean? Contrast D bands. Oh, so, okay. If you do do it out of a contrast fabric, I gotcha. Then that's whenever you need, they're calling them bands. I guess that's what they are, but um, this is the contrast that you need for D. Got it. Okay. Cute though. I love the shape. Even the slim skirt, I love the shape. So, close fitting bodice, pleated skirt, back buttoned opening, side slant pockets, side seam pocket. Okay, so C and D do have side seam pockets, contrast bands. Cute. All right. Oh my gosh, another cutout. <laughs> okay, well, well, there's definitely a trend here. This is what I'm talking about. This is a thousand percent what I'm talking about. See how there's like under boob because of the tie. So, that I really did not love about the one that I made last year. It just felt too exposed. Even though nothing really is being shown, like you can see your boob, you know, <laughs> parts of your boob. So, okay. So that's what I was talking about with the other one. So I would try and figure out a way to draft this to where it wasn't as revealing and then either add this on top, like pin it on top, or tie it around that piece something like that is where my mind would go but you've got your again they're doing a play on stripes so you've got this stuff cut on the bias going diagonally and then you've got your straight green here more bias cut stuff you've also got a button band get a lot of practice with that this season this feels a little bit big Maybe just big on her, but also maybe a big arm sigh. And also it's really far out over her shoulder. I was just going to say, I wonder if this version comes with sleeves and it does. So I feel like this was a bodice that was drafted for sleeves and then they made a sleeveless version. Same thing that I talked about in the new look video on Monday, something I've really been trying to pay attention to. So there is too much fabric here and it's too wide here. Um, you need all of that. You need a larger arm side for a sleeveless ver or for a sleeved version, but for a sleeveless version, you want it to be smaller. So it's not that hard to fix. You just have to spend the time and fix it yourself. It's not going to be done for you. Ideally, in a perfect world, you'd be trying to find a 
pattern that has separate pattern pieces for the sleeveless bodice and separate pattern pieces for the sleeved bodice. The only time I can remember seeing that is with the Tunic Bible. That book, the Tunic Bible book, has separate bodices. So keep that in mind. And if you guys want more information about this, I can do a whole separate video, maybe try and compare, show you the two pattern pieces beside each other, and then also how to alter this. Um, there are blogs out there that explain how to do it though. So if you're wanting instant gratification, um, you know, Google that. But if you want that from me, just let me know in the comments. If you ever want any video from me, just let me know in the comments. I have a running list and I get to them as I can. Okay, so here's a fun take on it um, with this button band that crosses over. Uh, I can't necessarily say that this isn't gonna also produce some under boob, <laughs> but if you're super concerned about it or just wanna eliminate this cutout altogether, that is not difficult to do either. You just lower these pieces down and square them off. But I do like the skirt, you know? It's beautifully drafted. This is almost like a princess seam, same way in a bodice, but instead of going out for a boob, it goes in to cinch in your waist. Fun, right? All right, here's a little elasticized sleeve. And then here's a longer sleeveless version. Yeah, this just feels tied so high that you know you can't help but you can't help but see. And then here you can really see how big the arm size is. Cute. Here she is straight on and it's not as obvious. But still, don't you want the the point of that, the tip of this cutout to be like right here in this area? That's what I'm thinking. And look at this, golly, that looks terrible. So there you have it, super cute fabric though. And then here's the back, I did the same thing as they did on the other one where it's almost like a straight panel. But because there is shaping built into those princess seams, like I was explaining, it's not gonna be a perfect stripe, it's gonna flare out a little bit. So it doesn't have the same impact as that first one we saw, um, but out of a solid or a busier print, something non-directional, you wouldn't be able to notice it. All right, so let's check out some of the line drawings. You can see here, this is the version with a little tie. There are the buttons. I'm also a little bit, I don't know how I feel about this just being like a standard button placket. That just feels... I don't know, it feels risky to me. Um, but here are some beautiful princess seams in the back. I really love that. Um, here's the other front bodice version. And then you have your maxi length. You also have some side seam pockets here, which they aren't really showing much in the pictures. Yardage wise, so for fabric, we've got cotton blends, crepes, eyelet, linen, yeah, cotton, there you go. cotton blends, that's in there. Uh, you know, cotton PK would be really pretty. I'm trying to think of the other varieties of cotton that would be cute. But this one definitely has to have some structure in it just because if not, then this whole thing here is really not going to be supportive. Um, all right, so you just need your buttons and then some elastic for the elasticized sleeve on D. If you can figure out how to make this not show side boob, it would be a really cute dress. Um, here are your fabric requirements. Kind of a lot of fabric, um, but I think it's because these, where's the line art? These um, panels are all one piece. You know, there's no waist seam to chop it up. So you have to lay these all out next to each other. So Depending on how wide your fabric is, if it's truly a 60 inch fabric, uh, maybe you can get a little bit, get away with a little bit less. But yeah, it takes a lot of fabric to do those full princess seam dresses. But they are really beautiful and, you know, really great for fabric applications as well. All right, so what do we have next? 
a whole series of white dresses. That'll be fun. Okay, so here's a little white eyelet. It looks like with some tears of some kind. And then like a wider sleeve, the little uh, really high neckline. Yeah, there's like tears, but there's also like, I don't know, kind of like an overlay or something going on. I don't exactly know. Um, and then there's the back. You can actually even see the facing for the back, which means the rest of this is sheer. That's kind of confusing. <laughs> um, okay, here's a basic line drawing that looks a lot simpler than the sample they sewed. This just has, you know, your bodice cut on the fold, a couple pleats in the skirt, a little sleeve, sleeve with a ruffle. All right, here's the two tiers. That must be her, the seam allowance pressed open then? I don't know what why that's... Oh, wait, there's like some kind of trim on there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so then there's this also this applique, not applique, but this trim that's applied to the seam lines. But still, is it sheer? <laughs> is it completely see-through through the eyelet? That's, I would never wear that like that. I mean, I guess you could have a slip or something, but I don't know. Dresses have back opening with thread, loop, and eye, sleeve variations, side pockets, and pleated skirt. C and D have a gathered skirt with a ruffle, and D has flat lace trim. I mean, I don't know. It's very basic. Very basic. Again, another good one for beginners. Um, there have been a lot of patterns this year that have just been like pretty simple. Um, and I like the idea behind this eyelet with the trim, the, you know, matching all white coordinating. I just, I don't know. And I guess this is supposed to be a little bit higher than the waist. It doesn't say over here, but this looks to be the waistline, but on her, it feels a little bit higher. Yeah, I guess because the trim is placed on top of the waist seam. So it's the illusion that your waist is higher, which I guess that's kind of cool. I don't know. I bet it's comfortable. <laughs> I bet it takes a lot of fabric. Let's look at that. So... Dobby, Swiss Dot, Linen, Crepes. Lord, they don't even recommend eyelet. <laughs> and that's what she has on. Okay. Um, so then you need your button for the back closure. Single fold bias tape. Maybe for B and C. The neckline maybe? I don't know. I don't know. No idea what the bias tape's for. Uh, and then your lace trim for D. And then, okay, well, the fabric requirements aren't as bad as I thought. Certainly the ones with the gathered skirts are a lot more than the ones without, but not as bad as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. So there you have it. And these, I have not been doing the sizes. I'm sorry. I apologize. Hopefully you've been catching them on your own. Uh, 6 through 14 and then 14 through 22 on this. Okay. Here's another one of those like, you know, prairie-esque uh, with a lot of the elastic. And this one has like pretty much kind of like sure, sheer, shuring. I feel like I don't say that right. Shuring. Um, it's just kind of spaced apart. But it's got the wide, you know, square neckline with the wide shoulder over here. A little puff sleeve. It's cute. It's definitely see-through. That's her underwear. Am I right? Okay. But obviously you don't have to make yours in a sheer white fabric. <laughs> obviously. Um... Oh, here's a strapless version. Here's one with long sleeves. 
and also a little like ruffle hem. And then I guess this is like a longer version. I do like this maybe even better than a sleeve to be honest. It's a learn to sew for fun level two. You level up. So you learn to insert elastic, which we actually all learned how to do already. Learn how to sew a bias tape casing, which we also learned how to do already. And learn to sew evenly spaced ruffles. So we didn't make any ruffles, but these two things you guys already know how to do if you followed my sew along. So kudos to that. Yeah, I just don't know necessarily if it's my style, but it's definitely one of those things that I could see myself trying. I mean, technically it's a fit and flare, so it should look good, you know, be flattering on my figure. Uh, yeah, I just don't know if it will read really junior, you know, like teenager. I don't know if people my age <laughs> wear... I shouldn't say that. I should be able to wear whatever I want no matter what age I am, right? I just don't want it to look like I'm trying. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I'm talking myself out of what I'm saying as I'm saying it. That's pretty much what's happening. <laughs> All right, yardage. Uh, the fabrics are eyelet, cotton blends, lawn, crepes. Yeah, I think, um, you know, gauze would be good. I don't think it necessarily needs to be drapey. In fact, I don't think it needs to be drapey at all, but it definitely needs to be lightweight because you won't get it to, these ruffles will just start to look really weird in a, you know, more heavyweight fabric. So I would say a light to midweight woven, but it doesn't necessarily have to be drapey. So it can be all cotton, not necessarily any rayon. All right, so you have to buy a ton of elastic and single fold bias tape. Nine yards of single fold bias tape? I guess that's what all the casings are made from and then you feed the elastic through. So that's a fun process. And then here's your fabric requirements. You really don't need much at all. Less than two, this one, Lord have mercy, is one and one eighth of a yard of fabric for most of the sizes. What is that, A? Oh, the strapless one. Yeah. So you guys are always asking what to do with like little cuts of fabric. Here's an example. I mean, I don't love a um, strapless dress, but maybe you could like sew ribbon. You know, if you ran out of fabric and didn't have enough to make these little self ties, you could, you know, sew ribbon on or I mean, maybe even like some kind of like flat cording or I don't know, you could find something coordinating fabric even. That's wild, a dress out of a yard of fabric. And then this is just over a yard and a half, still not a lot at all. That's for B, the one she's wearing. So yeah, that's, that's exciting. Uh, the sizes are four to 12 and then 12 to 20. I love whenever they cross over, like 12 is included in the little and the big. I don't know why, but I do like that. All right, next white dress. This one's kind of cute. This is also a learn to sew for fun. It's got a V-neck, a button placket. Uh, looks like some, is there a waist? No waist seam, but maybe a fisheye dart or something? I don't know what I'm seeing there. Yeah, a big fisheye dart and a bust dart. So it's gonna fit beautifully. And then it's got this shirt tail hem and, you know, shaping through the waist, kind of slim fit on the uh, hip. This has a facing, which is what I think this means. Maybe even top stitched facing. That's kind of an interesting choice. Yep, I love it with the little flat. This apartment they found is <laughs> really nice. And then there's the back, not super great fit there. I mean, I guess she is kind of turning a little bit, so it's hard to see, but let's see what the back. So learn to sew a facing, learn to top stitch, learn how to make buttonholes. All things that I don't think were covered at all in the, um, 
in the one I did. So that would be a way to try a whole bunch of new uh, techniques. All right, so the back does have fisheye darts. That's really nice. So, you know, oh man, I really feel like this could be something great even for those of us that are pear-shaped. Uh, you would just need to do a lot of grading in the side seam. And since there's no center back seam, you know, can't really hide it in there. So you'd have to add, you know, you're going to be multiple sizes, right? You're going to be like a 14 on the top and like a 22 on the bottom or something. That That's what I am usually. So you'd have to add that width somewhere. And when it's like a straight slim fitting dress like this, there's really only a couple places. If you put it in the side seam, then you run the risk of the hem being so wide. So I mean, maybe you could take it in and take it out and back in again. I don't love that either. These close fitting ones are just a little bit tough because you really just need room in the back. You know, you don't necessarily need any room in the front. So maybe I just haven't educated myself enough to know if there's an adjustment that you can add to a single panel that is like a full bust adjustment, but without a center back seam. Do you guys know anything like that? If so, please leave it in the comments section because it is cute. And you know, guys, I'm always harping on these darts and they have them. So I'm like, oh, I really want to, I want to have this because that's so nice and I know it will look good. It just has to fit in the back bum section. All right, linen, crepe, gauze, lightweight denim. I don't know about gauze on this one. I don't even know about crepes on this one. I think something more structured, it will be better. Yeah. Um, buttons, and that's it. And then you have your sizes, 8 to 16, and then 18 to 22. So now I'm thinking, no thank you, because I would have to buy both. I'd, well, I wouldn't buy both, but I'd have to grade out the 14, like one, two, at least three sizes. And without seeing, oh, that's just way too complicated. Normally when it's like, you know, whatever, an eight to 14 and then 14 to 22, you know, it's all, the all my sizes, even the smaller bus sizes all live within the one pattern, but now it's split between two. So I don't want to know what to do. I guess I could buy both and then trace one off onto the other, but that's annoying. All right, um, here are the fabric requirements. Mm, yeah, you really, less than two yards of fabric, so that's good. Quite a bit of interfacing. I mean, I know that you have to interface this button band. I'm guessing they have you interface the uh, facing as well, that's all I can think. But if you've got a more hourglass or more straight figure, I, I do think that this is going to be a beautiful pattern. I love the seam lines that they put into it. So, well, Lord have mercy. Oh, wait, that is right. 8 to 16. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry. All right, next up. Oh, a crop top. So, what is that? We've got a little prairie-like crop top with a little ruffle on the square neckline and little poofy sleeves with ruffles here, ruffles below the bust. And then it looks like a pant with a like zip fly front and a, you know, crossover band, waistband. Here's the top <laughs> in zebra print, okay. Here's a cute little gingham and then it's shorts okay okay it is pants slash shorts all right well I mean so I'm not wearing this because I don't like truly prefer to show my midriff but they're, I mean, this one's real cute. Even the one she's wearing is cute. But this one's cute. 
and the little short or the longer pant. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it looks cute to me, but I don't know if it's my style. Close fitting self-lined tops have princess seams, back separating zipper. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, of course. How else would you get into it? Uh, three inches above normal waist. So if these fit, let me finish reading. A has a front casing with drawstrings. The, yeah, the zebra version. Uh, B has a flounce. C has ruffles and a sleeve with a elastic casing. Shorts D and E have front pleats, side pockets, back yoke, and then E is lower calf length. So it doesn't say where this hits, where the pants hit on the waist. But if like the top ends three inches above and then the you assume the pants hit right at the waist, then you're only showing three inches of skin. So it's not that bad, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's take a closer look. Oh, look at these pants. This is a no. This is a hard no. <laughs> what is this? I didn't even notice that. Did they show us? Yeah, here's a back version. Is that so that you can... Why? Did... What is that for? Does anybody know? Is this just like... I know they have that on jeans, but I don't know. It looks weird in a line drawing. Is it so you can extend the rise of the back but get a better fit to fit like the curvature of your back? Is that why that's like that? Why do you have a back yoke on pants? Does anybody know that? I'm asking you guys a ton of questions today. <laughs> it could be cute. I know it's going to look adorable on certain people. I don't know about me though. But I'm also oddly like not totally opposed to it either. Cotton blends, linen, gingham, chambray, mm -hmm. and then oh, you just need a ton of notions, mostly elastic, a separating zipper, hook and eye, drawstring cording. All right, your fabric requirements for the tops are, you know, not much, actually kind of more than I would think, but, and then the shorts and pants just need, you know, one yard or a, a couple yards and some fusible. So not a ton of fabric. You need a whole outfit in, what would that be? Two and one eighth of a yard. That's kind of cool. I mean, the yoke doesn't look bad on her, but she also has a little bum. <laughs> so I don't know. All right. Next up. Oh, this is cute. Oh, it's a jumpsuit too. This is fun. All right, so you've got a wrap. Uh, a little hard to tell from this angle, but this wrap where it crosses over does look a little low to me. Um, if her bust apex is here, this looks to be right in line with her bust apex. So you're gonna be getting a little bit of cleavage. The shoulder seam, the arm seam looks beautiful. Very pretty. And it looks like it wraps over and then kind of comes down like this, maybe? It's hard to tell with this busy print. Here's another version with a sleeve. So be careful of this and make sure that, you know, it fits. It might be a little bit small of an arm side if there's not separate pattern pieces for the sleeved version and the non-sleeved version. Here's a longer version. Here's another jumpsuit. And then hers definitely has a tie, so there is a tie version as well. Yeah. See this? She doesn't have humongous boobs, probably not a lot of cleavage in anything, um, but it's pretty, it's pretty deep. It's pretty deep, and you can see how it ties, how it wraps over like that. That's cool. Let's look at this one. Yeah, that's neat. And I think that the if one tie is attached to this portion and the other one is in the side seam, then it's going to pull the back in a little bit. Let's see. We have a back version. Oh. There's no... 
waist seam. So there's literally no shaping there at all. It's actually kind of big on her. And that is a wedgie. So all things to keep in mind, granted her body is not like yours or mine. I mean, not even like, I'm not even referring to size, like how big she is or small she is. I just mean like her bum is shaped differently than probably almost everyone else's bum. So even though she has a wedgie, maybe you won't have a wedgie is what I'm trying to say. Oh my goodness. Okay. Semi-fitted mock wrap dresses and jumpsuit in two lengths have front tucks and sleeve or sleeveless variation. Side closures, tie ends. Yeah, I mean, I guess it probably looks fine in the back on the dress version. Again, no fisheye darts or anything like that, but I don't know how much shaping is built into this little guy. This would be interesting. I don't, um, yeah, see, no waist seam here. That's so strange. I mean, obviously you could take it in a little bit, um, but when you do that out of just the center back seam, I don't know, that could affect the crotch some. That would take some, some thinking. Yardage, chambray, crepe, linen, twill. Yeah, I even go into the lightweight ones here too, you know. Well, they did it a little bit with the crepe. Um, but yeah, any of those wovens would be good. And then sizes, 6 to 14, 14 through 22. So see, I could make this because I would grade from... 14 to 22 or however I am on the on the hip um, but it's all in one so that's why I like that okay uh, two yards three yards somewhere around there for the fabric okay another little jumpsuit this is a Laura Ashley pattern literally can't see anything when you're like bending over, but I guess I can tell you that it is a very deep V, very close fitting bodice, possibly even has cups in there, um, a little cutout or something here, maybe halter top, maybe just spaghetti strap, I can't tell, and then kind of a wide leggish or at least straight leg pant. Here's the romper version. This is cute. This is just you know, very revealing. It's very deep, very thin fabric, you know, shapes your breast, you know, like it's, it's doesn't leave much to the imagination. Then you've got a little keyhole opening here, which I wonder what, how in the world is this intersection kept closed? Okay, here's another version that has that little like elasticized shoulder and um, like sleeve. Okay, this is very Laura Ashley with the flounce sleeve and the ruffle pant. And then there she is. Is that a, I think that's got to be a hook and eye or some kind of hardware there to keep that closed but just see how like there's a lot of skin you know a lot of skin showing there also not doesn't fit great right in this area she's also leaning over so oh look at the back wow okay and that's cording I think not like a spaghetti strap and then you just tie yourself up into it they actually missed <laughs> they didn't put the string all the way through all of them. They missed this one on the bottom. I wonder what that's about. Strange. They probably never expect for someone like me to come along and literally pick apart every detail. But, I mean, that's what I would do if I was shopping. I don't know why they just left that one off. That, I don't, I have no 
no explanation for that in my mind. But look how good it fits her little booty. It looks really good. No wedgie. So, yeah, that's just a very, like, you know, revealing summer outfit. Yeah, semi-fitted, no. Very fitted. <laughs> Pull-on romper or jumpsuit has self-fabric lined bodice front, elasticized waist, and side seam pockets. Purchase cord shoulder straps, extend to lacing and back, and C and D have elasticized shoulders. Let's see what the back of C and D look like. Okay, so just completely closed. Yeah, could be really cute. I don't hate this. I did muslin a dress that had this kind of like bra cup style. And I just remember feeling very like exposed. I don't know. All right. Fabrics, crepe, lawn, Swiss dot, cotton blends. Yeah, I agree with that. And then you need some bias tape, cording, and elastic, and a hook and eye, depending on which one you're making. Sizes are 4 to 12, and then 12 to 20. And then here's your fabric. You know what I just noticed? That they don't have um, body measurements on here. So if you don't know your size, what are you supposed to do? I guess you go here and find your size and then compare it to this chart. Okay. Anyways, um, look at this. Not a lot of fabric either. That's cool. I do want to make a little romper for this summer. I don't know that it's going to be this one necessarily, but I do want a little romper. I have a couple ready to wear ones and you know, they don't fit great. If they fit in the, in the hip, then they're always too big on top. So I want one that fits well. Um, cause I do find myself wanting to wear them. All right, look at this, an asymmetrical button band, incredibly ill-fitting top. I can't even believe, like, her face is my face right now. Oh, man. I don't even know where they went wrong. It's just, maybe this is an example of the sleeveless sleeve thing, because look how it's pulling all across here, which makes me think that the sleeve needs more room or something. I don't know. It looks very uncomfortable. Here's how it's supposed to look. I don't I don't know that I get the asymmetrical thing. Just put the buttons in the middle. And then here's a long sleeve version with little ties. And then that sleeve. I mean, yeah, something funky is happening right here. And then also in here, there's a lot of gaping. And then look at all this. So that makes me feel like the shoulder slope is off. I mean, look, that is like, not even on her body at all. It's like floating above her. <laughs> they were able to figure out a way to get this to lay flat and to minimize a lot of whatever was going on in that first picture. But look at the cute short paired with it, though. That's a fun, cute little outfit if it fit. And then in the back, look, we've got our little princess star or our little like extended back darts, which is a really nice detail. But it's got to be something with the sleeve. That's all I can think. Oh, and look, they changed the... Wow, they edited the color so much that it turned the shirt from this like light-colored chambray to this. I wonder why they did that. I guess they thought it didn't stand out enough. All right, semi-fitted top has length variations with asymmetrical buttoned opening, bias tape armhole finish. I guess it's for the sleeveless one. Long sleeve with self casing and tie, short sleeve with bias tape and, and elastic, short sleeve with band. 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, honestly, it's just not even cute enough to begin with to even futz around with any of that other stuff. Right? But I hope that you guys can tell by looking at the samples, you're starting to be able to see when patterns have been drafted well and when maybe they haven't been drafted as well. Not to say they can't be fixed. It just will take a little bit of work. Cotton lawn, cotton blends, gingham, and linen. You need your buttons, bias tape, and elastic. And then, like, no fabric. So that's cool. Yeah, I just don't love it enough to even give it any more time in this video. <laughs> okay, here we are with our little twisty top thing again. You guys know I love this detail. To me, this is right in line with ruffles and flounces and bows. Like, I just love this detail so much. Um, this one has kind of like a crossover-esque type thing going on. I don't love that the belly button showing, you know, that I'm definitely not going to be showing my belly button. But you could definitely make these pieces longer and not show your belly button or wear pants that are taller maybe here's a long sleeve version with the wrist ties your regular one with sleeves kind of a drop shoulder action going on you can even tell on this one it comes off her shoulder and then here's a long sleeve pink snake skin version Yeah, the length is, like, not happening. Oh, my word. I didn't even realize that. That looks ridiculous. It's like a, I don't know, a balance. Like a curtain balance across her butt. That's weird. I don't want to do that to my butt. <laughs> Oh my gosh, is that like that for all the hems? Please say no, please say no. Okay, no, it's not. Okay, so it looks like oh, maybe even C is a little bit longer. Yeah, it definitely is. Look how long this is versus this. So they have extended this for you if you don't want to show your belly button. Thank you. Amen to that. This version is nice and normal, and I would totally wear that. Same with this guy. Um, you could certainly add these sleeves to either of these versions and then have a longer version of B. But this, I don't know, that is just, I'm not digging it. I just don't get, I don't get it. I don't think it's like super flattering if you have like a fuller figure and, well, I mean, if it's not flattering, then what's the point? I mean, maybe if you like straightened these out and even that, I, I don't know. Honestly, this whole outfit is weird to me. Like with the light wash jeans and the gold stilettos and then this top, I just, I don't know what's happening. Uh, okay. Loose fitted top with twisted front detail and hem variations. Bias tape for armhole finish. Wrong side of fabric may show. Long sleeve with bias tape casing and ribbon tie. And then we saw those already. Crepe, lawn, georgette, and crepe de chine. Okay. You know, Shally's also in there. Kind of definitely going for the lightweight drapey fabrics. Then you've got your notions. The sizes are 6 to 14, 14 to 22, and then fabric requirements. You actually need more than I would imagine. So, although I like a couple of the versions, I don't know, it's just not, not enough, even though I also love that twisty detail too. Okay, here's another something that I loathe, and that is asymmetrical one shoulder tops. But alas, this one has a dolman sleeve and like an elastic case ruching bit here, which I actually love this detail. 
and I'm sad that there's nothing going on over here. Oh, and then this one has this little handkerchief hem, I guess is what you call it. This one has a ruffle, a ruffle in both places. Yeah, I don't know. I don't love it still. It's the one shoulder. I really just do not understand a one shoulder. Pullover fitted tops have one shoulder extending to sleeve with or without ruffle and shaped hemlines. Purchase cording for drawstring adjust gathering at side. All right. If this is your style though, I do think this is a really cute asymmetrical top. I do love this. That is going to look so great on every single body type. So there you go. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> this is for knits. So you've got your cotton knits, your jersey, your interlock. Haven't been a ton of knit anything in this collection. This might be the first one actually. And then you just need your cording and then it's extra small, small, medium, and then large, extra large for the sizing. And then here's your fabric requirements. There you have it. All right, next up, there are a lot of patterns here. I think we have like seven more. Uh, okay, we've got this, I don't know, nurses scrubs. <laughs> Top tunic and dress is what they're calling it. I'm getting strong scrub vibes from that first one, right? Um, it looks like dolman sleeves again, maybe a neckband, a little v-neck, a little shaped hemline, you know, and long tunic length. This one is shorter, has more of like a bishop sleeve with a band, and then this like, you know, front uh, placket thing, yoke. Uh, forward shoulder with some gathers, a lot going on in that top. This is a dress version. Okay. 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 <laughs> I don't not like it. I just don't really, I don't know. This seems very straight to me too. Yeah, a tunic over jeans? I don't think so. Very loose fitting, pullover, top tunic and dress, have front yoke, front and neck bands, and hem variations. Sleeveless sleeve band and then sleeveless. I mean, this one's cute, but you know, I'm not buying patterns where I only like one of the versions and I would just, this would never look good on me. It would never fit. I mean, it's not never, but it would take a lot of work to get it to fit. And I don't love the rest of it enough to work on it, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why this one's like rubbing me the wrong way. I almost like I'm angry at it and I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Lawn, Dobby, crepes and linen. You just need a little bit of bias tape and then a little bit of fabric. Very affordable little project. Yeah. I mean, this version like shortened to not a tunic. It, you know, it's okay. It, but it's, it's not like loving it. Next up, another little crop top with custom cup sizes. Now remember, before you all start going, skipping ahead to the next pattern, you can always add a skirt to this seam here and make a dress. So don't write it off completely. Um, this is a little sweetheart neckline, I think princess seams and like a little spaghetti strap. This is a bra. I don't know why they're calling it a top. This is like legitimately a bra that stops right underneath your bust, which in my mind is a bra. Uh, this one has 
a little like peplum. I don't know. Where are you wearing these? Here's another one with a like empire waist band and like a circle skirt. Okay. Yep. Well, there you have it. So you can extend these circle skirt pieces, you know, to be a dress. And then you have like a little empire waist dress. Same with this one. Um, or add any skirt you want to this. This one you would need some kind of waistband or something here. But yeah, I don't know. Are these meant to be like intimates? I mean, she's wearing it with jeans, so I don't think she's going to bed. But these two look kind of like lingerie-esque. Fabric you need, double-edged scalloped lace, cotton blends, gingham or twill, and then lining fabrics for the lace one, I guess. Three buttons. Three buttons. Where did, oh, right here. Separating zipper, separating zipper. Okay. And then all the sizes are in one and you need like zero fabric. Actually, well, that's for 45 inch. So there you go. I don't know. Is anybody making these? If you want this pattern, let me know. Like what? What's the deal? Are you wearing it like this? Are you over the age of 14? Not judging. Just genuinely curious. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we've got another Learn to Sew for Fun. I think that's our third one in this collection. This is like a wrap skirt. Yeah, it's a wrap skirt. That's fun. Ooh, fruit. Okay, patch pockets. And then hers is like a little bit gathered, I think. They made good use of that gingham. Okay, learn to sew a patch pocket. Learn to sew tie ends. Learn to sew gathers. Okay. Here's our line drawings. You could literally make this out of just about any fabric on earth. Well, any summery type of fabric. So literally anything lightweight to midweight woven. You could probably even make it out of a knit, depending on the sizing and how much stretch your knit had. Cotton blends, gingham, linen, lightweight denim. I mean, they were going a little bit more structured, but I could totally see uh, this version out of something uh, much more lightweight, like Shally even. Hook and eyes, okay. Then there's your sizes, 6 to 14, then 14 to 22. And then here's your fabric requirements. Yeah, I actually have a hard time with skirts. I can never, like, get the waistband to look good. So... Maybe I should try this one and see. If it's a straight cut, if the waistband is a rectangle, I'm in trouble. If it's curved, that tends to be a little bit better, but those are hard to sew. So, I don't know. I like that they have so many learn to sew patterns, so that's fun. Here are those shorts that we saw the girl wearing a couple of patterns ago. Shorts with a ruffle. And then these pants with the front slit, which I've actually seen in person, and it's really cute. So I'm not going to say anything negative about this. I actually really like it. <laughs> and then here's just the regular short. A pant with a ruffle. And then there's the shorts again. She actually has a bit of a booty, and they did a good job of getting these to fit. 
those are so cool. I like how they did the stripe placement. I don't know if that's part of the pattern or not. Although that doesn't look great. bias cut waistband you can tell because of the stripes she loves this pose where she puts her hair to a side and then like drops her one shoulder that every single time she's modeled this collection she's done this semi-fitted shorts and flared pants with hook and eye closure front lap zipper and side seam pockets i don't love the side seam pockets flounce Oh, the slit is only in one side. That's kind of fun. And then the back has princess seams. Okay, so that's what I was wondering when I was looking at her back. And I'm wondering, you guys out there, help me out with this. You guys that are proficient in pants. Doesn't that mean you can get like a really, like a much better shape? in the back like if you're pear shaped because see like i'm pear shaped so it's like i need more in the hip but i also have a bubble butt so i need more in the butt too so it's like you know from side seam to side seam there's a lot going on <laughs> but i think i mean maybe i should try princess seamed shorts i feel like aren't the colette iris shorts princess seamed in the back I made those right when I started sewing and I feel like I got a pretty decent fit I didn't realize it at the time how fortunate I was um, but I feel like they fit okay same goes for these pants um, you know they're kind of uh, like there's no extra gathers or pleats or anything like that. Like they're pretty streamlined. But can't you hide a bunch of shaping in these princess seams? Hopefully you guys can help. I really do like both versions of the pants. I even like the version with the ruffle. So shorts with the ruffle. I don't need a ruffle on my upper thigh. You know, I don't need to draw any more attention to that area. <laughs> But I am very intrigued by the shape that this has given her. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting. That's something to consider. Cotton blends, poplin, crepe, linen. Yeah, denim. One zipper, one hook and eye. 6 to 14, 14 to 22, and then here's your fabric requirements. Yeah, linen would be really cute. I wonder what these are. They look polyester y to me. I love that look though. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip over Mommy and Me, but it's another Learn to Sew for Fun. So it looks like these, probably these other tops. I figured they'd be the pants. Then we've got a swimsuit. We'll take a look at this quickly. Okay, so, oh, look, it's the headband that I have the tutorial for. I wonder if theirs is the same construction method as mine. It looks like, no, mine's better, just saying. Okay, uh, very deep plunging front one piece with a dropped waist. Where's her belly button? It must be like right here. Um, that looks odd. If I were to make this, I would move the waistband up some, just an inch, and then have this come a little bit higher. But see how it's like at the smallest part of her? I mean, that looks like a dress. Like, I've made a dress like that before. Oh, there is a dress. That's fun. The cover-up's real cute. Oh, dang. 
well, no tan lines. And I'll say like the shape of the bottom, like with the leg cut out, isn't awful. I've definitely seen some where it looks like a diaper or your bum looks like so wide. This has a nice little shape to it considering it's like, you know, not a super high cut. Oh, she hates this. Ew, that's what she's saying. What am I wearing? Please hurry up, take this picture. I hate this part. <laughs> she's also inside like an office, like a doctor's office or something. The cover up doesn't look as cute in the sample. I don't know what happened. The cover up's a thousand times cuter right here. Why is that? What happened? By all accounts, it should be so cute. I don't know why it's not. Maybe it's that fabric. I don't know. It looks a little big in the back too. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe like on this version, it just looks more fitted through the waist. Okay, swimsuit has bodice variations, lined panties, self-lined bodice and ties. B has B has self-faced band with hook and eye closure, and the cover-up is very loose fitting with shaped front skirt and lapped fronts. Yep. And there you have it. Oh, this one isn't completely naked in the back. This one at least has something holding you in. So there you go. I mean, for a one piece, it is wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Still very sexy. Maybe even sexier than a bikini, if I can say. So you need your swimwear knits, sheer lining, fabric, all that. There you go. After making that um, uh, bodysuit, I have a, a little bit more confidence in making a swimsuit than I ever have before, but I don't really go places in swimsuits. Like I don't go to the beach. I don't go to the pool. So, and then the last one is this just a period. Is it a costume? Yeah, I can call it a costume, right? Um, so we're going to skip over that one as well, but that is going to do it. I feel like the front half was a little bit more strong than the back half. Um, there's definitely some contenders in here, definitely some ones that I want to take a closer look at um, in the store if my Joanne ever gets it together and can get the new collections in. Um, but definitely a theme here with cutouts and, you know, stripe placement and these elasticized shoulders was a big trend. Um, even this little like twisty detail and also like the tie fronts on these, you know, few that have that. So there's some fun ones in there. It's a little bit on the young side, but um, definitely some contenders. Let me know what you guys think, which ones you're going to be picking up. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye.